morning. I slept very, very, very well. That's good because the wind was a little bit softer than the day before and the sails didn't flap as much. I did put on the Tiller Pilot because it makes it able to steer uh, more down, more downwind. Uh, so the batteries are at 85% right now. So hopefully there will be some today and my solar panels pick it up to become full again, like 100%. So now I'm going to um, um, do a new Predict Wind uh, upload and therefore I need my coordinates. So I'll pick that up from the plot. So I put the lights on because at night I turn them down. And also, let's see, on the high 70s. So coordinates are here. I put them in my log book there. And then I'll go to predict with. So in Predict Wind I go to a grip and then to the little drop over here which coordinates with the drops over there and when I go to the drop over here I have the green drop which is the starting point and there I will fill in my new coordinates 750 Great. Now the new point shifted so this is the you can see it. This is the new um, route. Then I can do again weather routing preferences. Everybody, everything is preset, so I can start doing the new route. So previously, I did um, the whole route from start to end, and then I went from let's say middle to end and that took a lot of uh, kilobytes data so now i only do like two days uh, ahead and then it's only well 100 kilobytes maximum and that should be the file size 100 200 kilobytes maximum and um, yeah makes things uh, better and while I'm waiting for the new data to arrive, I'll show you how I register uh, during a trip. So during a trip, I register the day, the log, uh, the distance per day, I write down the date and uh, how much I motor, so how many hours and how many liters, so that I can see if the average which I'm calculating with is uh, right and it also gives me a good feeling like for example uh, the fifth day I did 113 uh, nautical miles and I calculate with 100 so I'm very happy with that and I do it as a, at a fixed time of course so I started my trip at 5 o'clock in the afternoon so today 5 o'clock in the afternoon I will uh, see how much nautical miles I have sailed fishing time I caught three It's a lovely day and it's a lovely day for a shower so I brought my salty water shampoo for hair and body and uh, I'm gonna shower but don't be afraid I'm not gonna jump in the water Thank you. 
This was a lovely shower. Good morning! It's uh, another lovely morning, although uh, it's cloudy and also a little bit of dark clouds. The night was uh, interesting. Interesting because, um, well, I decided to go to bed early and uh, I think I can do it like this. So, I decided to go to bed early. That worked. But as soon as I lied, lay down, the boat started speeding, speeding, speeding. So six knots, six and a half knots, up to seven knots, 7.2 knots. And which is, of course, very nice because we all want our boat to speed. But in the night, in the dark, and then it like all the waves, I thought it was best to put two reefs in. And putting two reefs in, um, sailing, before the wind could be difficult because of the sliders in the mast uh, if they get like uh, fixed in the mast because of the wind they turn and then they stick into the mast and then it becomes difficult to pull the sail down so i thought oh oopsie i hope that it will work and it did So I slided the sail down and then put the reefs in and I started to put both reefs in. So you see there um, the, the green line and also the red line on the beam and that's where I put in the reefs. And if you look up here, you can see the white things to go in the mast and there are also big black ones, uh, but they're already down. Um, at the end of the beam I also made a like, extra thing to, to put the, the back side more secure and I was sitting like there in front pleated to uh, the spinnaker uh, pleat in front of the mast. So that all turned out to work really fine, uh, although I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. I don't know, it was still the speed because the boats keep on speeding, uh, the waves, the winds, another, the one big, um, one very very big boat <laughs> which passed like two nautical miles next to me and normally that's a lot of distance but in the night it had all the lights on all the deck on so it was a huge huge ship next to me it was a lovely sight a sort of christmas thing with all the lights on uh, so that worked um, so i stayed in bed a little longer i just slept until it was done which is also fine And there was this other thing, there was this other thing that I was thinking about, and that was why the um, wind uh, vane um, couldn't steer deeper, like 150 degrees. So I steered with my tiller pilot on all night and all day um, to keep me going in the right direction. And that meant that the batteries were like 75% full, which is low in my terms because my battery is always 100% full. So I read the book from um, Peter Furtman again, and there it said like with less wind or in wind directions uh, between 120 and 180, you should turn the, the, the blade more vertical so that's what i did and uh, as a result of that yeah i think it uh, steers better like uh, more 150 instead of keeping up 120 degrees so i'm happy with that too
and I asked my uh, my team uh, to give me some uh, indications about uh, the sales setup. So, for instance, Maarten and HP, who are both also Grinda owners, I asked them like, what would you do with the for sale? And would you sail with only the for sale when the wind starts picking up? Or would you sail only with the main sail when the wind starts picking up? And of course, different persons, you get the different perspectives, uh, which is fine. Uh, Martin, for instance, told me like, uh, you can sail with 20 knots full uh, sail gear, so don't be worried. And unless your tiller pilot cannot handle it anymore and it keeps on doing it for a couple of times, then you start reefing. So, well, to give uh, an indication of some boundaries. And I also asked Tim, my uh, shore pilot, and well, he is like an encyclopedia of wisdom uh, concerning to sailing. So I asked him all kinds of questions and because one, when thinking about things you get all kinds of questions, solutions, options and he thought with me through the whole process and he basically said that it's important to have the head sail uh, full uh, because then the boat starts pulling uh, through the pressure of the head sail instead of the main sail which is more aft, it starts pushing the boat uh, together with the head sail and uh, the steering at the back you have the biggest distance so the biggest stability that made sense to me um, and I also decided to put the Genoa sheet in the foot rail because you want to have the sheet more outside. So there are a couple of options you can do that and this boat is provided with a foot rail and you can change like the things there are on it. Uh, although that freaked me out also yesterday because I thought like what if uh, the pressure is too high when slamming the sail? But I did it anyway. And it gave a much more stable situation. So you see the sheet running through the black uh, roller on um, the foot rail. So normally it's sheeted to the white roller on this, uh, this inner um, rail. So that makes the situation like more comfortable and still stays more open. I wanted to do the, the, the spinnaker pole in the Genoa because that gives another stability like uh, you do with the mainsail and uh, the preventer. Um, but I have the up hole, I couldn't find the down hole. I think I just moved it because I was not uh, wanting to use the Genoa pole or the spinnaker pole because I have a Genoa now. Um, then I had to, to cleat another line to the front of the boat and at night in the dark with all the waves I didn't think it's a good solution. So not safe enough let's say. So that's what I'm going to prepare in the harbor once I'm in Mindelo for my next crossing so that I can use the spinnaker pole, uh, can feel it again because it's rather heavy and it's rather big. So yeah the the sequence of things i want to repeat that before i just do it uh, in a safe environment so that's what i'm doing next and um, i'm showing you the preventer on the uh, beam because that's a fixed position as well so the preventer of the beam is cleated on the red uh, cloth there it goes all the way up front to the big uh, cleat uh, in front of the deck and from there, from underneath the big cleat in front of the deck it goes all the way here in the side down and onto this uh, winch I'm going to hoist the Cabo Verde flag and the 
yellow quarantine flag because uh, I'm uh, already outside of Europe and once uh, going into Cape Verde this is what they really really want Thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked the video, please subscribe to my channel. I'm also very looking forward to all your lovely comments. Um, a special thanks to all my PayPal friends and Patreons who support me during this trip. Uh, I have some uh, behind the scenes footage about El Hierro, uh, taking a hike there uh, on Puerto Santo. Uh, playing golf, doing yoga, taking a hike and all kinds of stuff. Uh, especially for my patrons it's available. Uh, if you want to become one it's patreon.com slash loveworks. And if you want to support me through PayPal it's paypal.me slash loveworks. Thanks so much and see you soon. Bye!